and on hold. And it has come out that the White House has written the letter to him saying, hey, let's work this out. Uh, the problem is, is that Europe's already cutting off their oil sales. They're already cutting off their currency worldwide. And Iran is already seeing incredible economic problems from this. And I saw this with Saddam when they said, Saddam, give up any time. We'll let you leave the country. And it turned out they had jets on standby to kill him and let him know that. So I, I think a lot of this is so they can later say, hey, we tried to avert war uh, because their actual messages to Iran is that they're trying to basically start a, a, a conflict with them, which will be a good political diversion. Then they can stage some terror attacks domestically uh, and say that Iran did it and use it as a pretext to crack down and have Obama and others run around grandstanding as our saviors protecting us while they destroy our way of life because of the agents of offshore criminal banks. Now, continuing here, I want to give you a quote before we go to break here. This is uh, from David Spangler, United Nations Director of Planetary Initiative. No one will enter the New World Order unless he or she will make a pledge to worship Lucifer. No one will enter the New Age unless he will take a Luciferian initiation. I remember actually more than a decade ago going to the library and actually pulling up the UN publication where he said that these people are beyond insane. But at least insane people dare big. You know, that's why psychos, criminals, Hitler, they dare big, they get control. I think the problem of good people is we're humble. We don't dare big. We better dare big to kick these people's asses. Because, uh, I mean, these are the nastiest scum we've ever seen. And nothing but total resistance will defeat them. Giving in to them is total destruction. We'll be back. It's InfoWars Nightly News. Stay with us. Sign of these evil 1776 flags. Doesn't get any more out of control than that, ladies and gentlemen. It's pretty un American what we're doing here at InfoWars.com. I mean, not only are we promoting liberty, but we're selling 1776 flags. Now that is Al Qaeda. Ron Paul's message of peace and civil liberty is bringing people together from all parts of the political spectrum. But to have Ron Paul as a choice for president in 2012, you need to help him get the Republican nomination first. There are a few things you'll need to understand to make this happen. In August 2012, the Republican Party will hold a national convention in Florida in which delegates will officially vote for a Republican nominee to run against Barack Obama. Each state has its own process for electing these delegates either through a caucus system, as in these states, or a primary system, as in these states. Caucuses and primaries are either open, meaning that you do not have to be registered Republican to vote for Ron Paul to be the Republican nominee for president, or closed, meaning that you do have to be registered Republican. Let's look at the primary states first. If you live in one of these states, you're in a primary state. In a primary election, registered voters may participate in choosing their candidate by voting in a secret ballot as in a general election. The specific rules and methods for voting for the Republican presidential nominee vary among states, but in each case your state will send delegates to the national convention to support the candidate that gets the most votes in the primary. But whichever state you're in, you have to show up at the right time on the right date with as many blue Republicans as you can to vote for Ron Paul. In states with close primaries, you will need to be registered as a Republican in order to vote for Ron Paul in the Republican primary. The deadlines to change your party affiliation to Republican differ from state to state. But some of these deadlines are many months before the primary. So if you live in one of these states, your most immediate concern should be changing your party affiliation to Republican. Deadline dates can be found at bluerepublican.org. If you live in one of these other primary states, you do not have to worry about party affiliation, as these are either open or blanket primaries. In other words, just show up. Now let's look at the caucus states. If you live in one of these states, you're in a caucus state. Just as if you live in a primary state, you must determine if the caucuses are open or closed. If closed, you must register Republican in time to be allowed to vote in the caucus. 
Think of a caucus as a tournament for delegates. Your county is divided up into various precincts. Each one holds a caucus. In your caucus, people from your neighborhood will stand and announce their desire to go to the county convention as a delegate. You'll have to identify those people who support Ron Paul and vote for them. If there isn't a supporter for Ron Paul at your caucus, you will have to stand and become the delegate for him. Those chosen at the caucus will go on to the county convention to compete to be a delegate to the state convention and finally to the national convention where they will vote for Ron Paul. The caucus system is a bit more work than the primary system, but in it one dedicated supporter can have the same impact as tens of thousands of voters. Often a Republican neighborhood caucus will have no turnout, especially in more liberal parts of the country. This is a great opportunity for blue Republicans to have a massive impact. Just a handful of blue Republicans in the right places will get Ron Paul the nomination. Remember, in these situations, you will have to vote yourself to be the delegate to advance to the county level and then network with the Ron Paul people there. There are many in the Republican Party that will not welcome blue Republicans or Ron Paul supporters of any kind. They may try to discourage or intimidate you. So bring as many friends as possible, stay positive, and have a great time sticking it to the establishment. You know you'll like it. Again, here's the list of states. If you live in one colored blue, you're in a closed state and must register Republican as soon as possible. If you live in one colored green, you do not, but don't forget to go to the primary or caucus on the right day. Finally, how do you go about changing your registration? In many states, you can do it online. In others, it's a bit more tricky. You can find detailed information about registering Republican in your state on the bluerepublican.org page. If we mobilize enough people, the Ron Paul Nation will be able to punch above its weight at the National Convention in Florida 2012. So please, for the sake of liberty and peace, tell others about Ron Paul and send them to the Blue Republican page and this video. And we are back. It's InfoWars Nightly News. You just saw during the break a viral video on the web uh, that basically was put together from an article that our uh, guest, uh, Robin Kerner, uh, put together. And he's what you call a blue Republican. He actually coined that term. And he's got a pretty big uh, volunteer organization out there. Uh, just as a lot of people voted for Obama uh, because he claimed he was against all these wars and torture, now he supported it. Uh, what uh, Robin and others are saying is, well, now you've morally got to support Ron Paul. And we see a lot of Democrats, a lot of independents coming over and registering as Republicans crossing over so that uh, Ron Paul can win. And he's neck and neck. He's still got a very good shot in growing, uh, despite the fact the establishment media has said that he can't win from the beginning. And this is really the secret weapon as independents, Democrats, and others that realize that the Republican and Democratic leadership are bought and paid for by the very same offshore corporate interest. It's key to have them wake up and come together. And this video uh, that we just showed you is a great way uh, to educate people on how they can do that. So I wanted to get Robin uh, on with us to talk more uh, about what he's done. And it's just another example of what one person can do, taking action, joining with others. Uh, it's had a uh, you know, great response out there. Robin, thanks for coming on with us. My pleasure, Alex. Thanks for having me. Oh, wow. So, uh, I mean, tell us about your organization. Uh, tell us about what you've done and where all this is going. Okay, well, it started with an article that I wrote, um, I think, back in the summer now. Uh, it was published on the Huffington Post and some other websites. And it was called, If You Love Peace, Become a Blue Republican Just for a Year. And um, it made a big impact. And I was basically saying, look, if you voted for Obama because you don't like crony corporatism, because you do like civil rights, because you don't like uh, wars against people who don't threaten us, if they were all the reasons you wanted to punish Bush and the neocon administration at the ballot box the last time round, then for consistency, if you were voting out of principle, the only thing you can do now is register Republican to make sure Ron Paul wins the GOP nomination with a view to having him go on uh, to win the presidency. And it seems that a lot of people liked that idea and they liked uh, the term blue Republican, which was what I called such people, those independents and former Democrats who probably supported Obama who are coming over to the GOP just for Ron Paul. Um, and obviously, Obviously, I would like us to 
remake the GOP and the image of Ron Paul so that instead of calling ourselves blue Republicans a year from now, we can just call ourselves Republicans. But obviously, we've got a long way to go. However, the uh, exit polls in the primaries that we're seeing are showing that the blue Republican movement is burgeoning, which it certainly is. And your website, of course, is then bluerepublican.com. Uh, BlueRepublican.org. Okay, yeah. BlueRepublican.org. We had it on screen up there. We'll put it back up there. Okay, great. And what, what I've done is I've been writing for the Huffington Post and, and uh, for about half a year, and I've tried to kind of put together a body of work that you, you might be able to use to perhaps persuade uh, your independent, politically independent and uh, Democrat friends to consider Ron Paul. So I've got quite a few articles. Most of those are linked on bluerepublican.org and also on bluerepublican.org, which is very important. We've got state by state information um, as to what you have to do and when you have to do it by to be able to vote in the Republican primary or caucus in your state to help get uh, Ron Paul into the White House. Well, uh, I mean, Democrats claim that they're for civil rights, claim that they're against crony capitalism and all this, but then clearly Obama is bought and paid for by the same interests that own uh, Mitt Romney and own George W. Bush, and he's had all these military attacks on Libya and other places and said, well, it's not really war. Now he signed the NDAA to secretly arrest American citizens and have us disappear into black holes. I think that's really, from what I've seen, really waking Democrats up to uh, the fact that Obama has betrayed them. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've been making the point in, in a lot of my articles that, um, you know, the problem here is is the system and the main parties are part of that system. We have a, you know, we have the republicrats. Uh, we've had the republicrats for generations. And uh, now we need to, we need a president who, you know, sees that problem and uh, will, you know, wants to change the system. Whether he'll be able to or not is a different question, but at least gets it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm definitely making that argument. And I think the American people are waking up. They're, they're starting to realize that, and especially the young, of course, who haven't been quite saturated in the mainstream uh, media of, of this country, starting to realize that most of American life is really determined by what the Democrats and the Republicans have always agreed upon, the presuppositions of the system, as Noam Chomsky calls it, um, rather than what they appear to disagree on. So, you know, it's, it's monetary policy, it's military industrial complex, it's the fact that uh, our mainstream politicians believe the Bill of Rights is just a damn inconvenience. All of these very fundamental things, which are really offensive to both conservative and liberal principles. Um, you know, needs to be undone, and that involves that that requires a system.